Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek, and I've got a few new purchases to share with you from the Phoenix Coin Show. Technically, it was called the Camelback uh, Collectible Show. This I picked up for a customer, and I was really happy I found it because uh, there were quite a few dealers there, and nobody had this coin. Well, not nobody, because I ended up with it. Now, one of the things I want to point out is, you see how funky the 2016 is? Remember when the 2021 Type 2 Eagles came out, and I kind of complained about the date? And they said, well, you know, it's kind of a throwback. And truthfully, it is kind of a throwback. They use the same style of lettering that they used back in uh, the 19-teens. This uh, is one of the more popular series of commemoratives that the U.S. Mint put out. Uh, the, they did all the 1916 coins. They did a centennial uh, restrike, basically, in gold. So the half dollar they made into a half ounce, the quarter... Standing Liberty quarter they made into a quarter ounce and the, they made the Mercury dime into a tenth of an ounce. Super popular series. Uh, there it's marked really fine. AU 24K, one half ounce. And uh, one of the mints better, better foot forward kind of items that they've made. Really glad they turned out so nice. I was happy to get this for my customer because uh, it was uh, actually a, a great up from what he was looking for and in the same price point. Now I did pick up a couple things from dealers that were coming into town the day before the show. One of which is I'm, I was really happy with this, this purchase because um, some of you who watch regularly, you know that um, we have a little bit of fun with old school holders. And so this is an old school holder. I'm looking like at the coin and the holder. It's a better date, you got your Carson City here. Real pleasing coin overall. The reverse of the coin is real solid. Uh, you know, of course, it is seemingly quite a bit higher grade than the front of the coin, the obverse. The fields on this coin are really nice, and then you've got your cheek is a little bit chattery, like you'll see. This is this old school holder. If you don't know, now you know. No, you might still not know. This is kind of fun because some of you may not know what, what this holder is. This is actually one of the earliest accurades I've had. Um, I love the fact that it uh, the the lettering on here looks like it's 8-bit eight eight bit technology, like it should say Capcom or something. But uh, I've, I've never owned one that says Connecticut on it. And so this coin here is uh, probably about a $700, $700 coin worth pretty close just to whatever the coin value is. Uh, but I also picked up another early holder, which many of you will know, I think, right away when you look at it, because you're a lot more familiar with it. You have the 78 here with some, uh, what would you call this? I'd almost call this bookend toning. It's just like it was in the book, and then it got toned on one end, one side only, right? So we got the 78 San Francisco Mint. The reverse has a little bit of a proof-like feel to it. You know, you've got your typical little scratch marks here. These 78s come pretty scuffy, pretty scuffy indeed, but overall a little bit of a proof-like field on that side. And then on this side, you've got that, that toning that actually looks pretty nice under the light, but not under the light. If you get it flat, it's just kind of dark looking, but in the light, it's got some, some reason to shine. This is the old school. They call these Rattlers. For those of you who don't know, this is one of the first generations of PCHS holders. And that's why they call them rattlers, because the coin would physically rattle inside of it. Uh, old school MS63, pretty nice coin. I think we're going to need about 135 bucks on that guy. I did pick up a couple of raw coins, and this one I thought was was pretty cool. Uh, this 1924 Denver Mint quarter, and. It has a really great original look to it. The D is right next to that bottommost star. And there is the date. And you'll see kind of that script writing that's the same uh, style that we just saw on that 2016, 2016 half ounce gold piece. The script writing was actually very similar. These coins come notoriously flat struck, 24, the 24 Ds. This is not a full head, although it has a really nice face to it. So on Standing Liberty Quarters, they collect these based on strike. 
and although you can make out her mouth and her nose and her eye really well, the portion that is missing still is kind of that darkened area that runs from uh, her neckline all the way up to the top of her head, and there's just like a lot of flatness all the way through there. Uh, overall, I mean, this coin this coin shows as a real nice BU coin. Um, I do think that I would call it an AU58. Uh, it has just a touch of wear at the high points, but I do like this type of an original color and luster. Uh, the person I bought it from, they had it priced kind of as an MS63. It, it'll probably, I'll, it didn't cost me that. I'll sell it probably for a little bit less than that. But uh, it has just a little bit of wear on the legs, and it's not really quite shown up here at the angles I'm getting it at. But a uh, Standing Liberty Quarters, tough, tough series. You have some of the coins here that aren't super expensive. A lot of a lot of them you can buy in the uncirculated range for $150 to $250, but some of them are just to the moon, shall we say. To the moon. Now I'm not going to show you all of these, but I actually had picked these up at the Tucson Coin Show. And uh, I asked the dealer if he had more, and he had a few left. So I bought the few that he had left, so I'll have some of these going up, I think, on our website here once we get get everything squared away. But uh, these were the uh, original slabs also. I mean, this, this uh, Ron Gillio uh, series, he had an ad that came out with this that said, you know, someday this is how all coins will be bought and sold and he was really right this is from march of 87 he hand signed it and dated it by the way i think there's something about that that's really kind of cool compared to compared to the current status where we don't know who's looking at the coins we don't know who's grading the coins so there's a little bit of a different i don't know vibe to the fact that you can take a coin that somebody else graded and they tell you who it was you can know who, who graded it. He put his name on it. All right, next up, speaking of uh, putting your name on something, for those Barber Quarter collectors, I don't get a lot of Barber Quarters in that I, that I send in. This here, you see this is an 1896. And this is the rare one. This is from the San Francisco Mint. Overall, it's a nice, I think, a nice VG. It, it has some design detail left to it. You can see some of the feathers and a little bit of the E Pluribus Unum up on the ribbon. The S is pretty strong. It has this little minor, uh, what, what would we call this at the, at the edge of the coin? A uh, rim issue. But overall, uh, you know, you can still see the ear, part of the hairline, um, the wreath, the eyes, the jawline. So there's a lot of meat left on the coin. And although it's got that little bit of a rim issue going on there, it is overall pretty pleasing. It has a very original look to it that I'll probably end up getting that certified uh, if someone doesn't buy it from me raw. Expensive, expensive. This is this is not in, in <laughs> this is not in yen, folks. That's uh, for the barber quarter collectors out there. You know exactly what what you're looking at there. Uh, I have a couple more fun things to show you. First of all, these Ground Zero coins, I picked up a few more. We're not going to study these too much on the two smaller... Whoa, 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 getting ahead of myself here. I was going to say, you know, these these ones here I uh, wasn't going to spend time on, but I, I have never had these coins from Uruguay in the World Trade Center holder. And so these guys here, this is, uh, I think I'm going to ask about 175 on this. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a really neat piece. When South America was uh, still striking coins in silver, and surprisingly, 1961, you wouldn't think that there was silver in any coins in the 60s, but uh, maybe that's why you didn't hear about Uruguay having the same financial problems as some other countries. Uh, I, I'm, 
I'm not 100% sure the purity on these guys. They may have only been 65%. Uh, they may have been a lower purity. But uh, pretty cool coin. Just called Gem Uncirculated. But I was pretty excited to pick that up. And now that I already ruined it for you, look at this guy. King Kamehameha. And uh, this is this is really cool. I haven't owned one of these in a long time. And this guy here is 1847. And a really nice portrait of King Kamehameha. And it has just really even fields to it. There you go. These are in the Red Book. Ha'apuni Hawaii. Kapahanari, I can't, I can't, I can't enunciate that all right. But this is the old school lime green label PCGS A55. Great looking coin. Um, almost to almost crack worthy, maybe crack worthy. It's just, there's little to no signs of wear on this thing. It just didn't have the luster. So back in the day that, you know, this something like this, even though you're not really seeing signs of wear because it didn't really have any luster, they wouldn't have called it uncirculated. But uh, anyway, really cool piece. This is about a thousand bucks on this guy. And uh, it's the first one that I've had in this high of a grade in a long time. And just a really neat series. Hawaiian, Hawaiian stuff is a lot of fun to collect. Last but not least, I have two little tokens that I bought that I was pretty excited about with Abraham Lincoln on them. This one's from 1927. And I want to show you something here real quick on the grading. You see all of those lines that pop up behind Abraham Lincoln between him and the, and the word Lincoln. When I turn it at that angle, those are all real fine, fine cleaning lines. So they did call this Unk Details Cleaned. So the T Elder issues, there's a couple different types of these. This one says a token on the reverse. And they're they're pretty cool. This is probably still a you know a few hundred bucks on this guy. Uh, even though it's cleaned, the nicer grade ones are a lot more expensive. There are a lot of people who collect Abraham Lincoln items. Uh, I don't have a specific reference on this. So they do have uh, the, I'm having a name problem. I'm pausing because I want to say Delory. But uh, I just every time I look at a name, I think, man, I'm, I'm just going to butcher that. <laughs> it doesn't help that lately I've been running into a bunch of people who pronounce their name wrong. So this one, now this one here is much nicer looking, 1910. A little bit stronger, uh, shall we say, detail to it. A little bit stronger detail and a different style. Also says a token. And it says to the emancipator and martyr. So this one is dated 1910. And gold token, this one's graded MS66. And you can see these follow each other numerically in the Delore. Delore. See, if I'm going to say the name fast. If you're going to say it wrong, say it fast. But no, uh, 47 and 48, so these are definitely right in, in, a, in a book right next to each other. Uh, this token is probably uh, $1,000 or north on this one because of the, the overall condition. It's a little bit tougher to come by. So that's a whole lot of stuff there, and, and there is other odds and ends and, and whatnot that happens at a show, but this was a fun group of stuff to show you. Thanks so much for watching. You can leave your comments down below. Thanks.